You may have learned to estimate the heat of a reaction, and you may have learned that the heat of reaction is the amount of heat that's either absorbed or given off when a reaction occurs. And at that point, you probably wondered, well, what can I do with the heat of reaction? And one thing you can do is a, a variant of a stoichiometry problem, where instead of figuring out how much of a product is produced in terms of grams or something like that, you look and see how much heat is given off for a given amount of a reactant. Suppose we consider the combustion of methane with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So we form two molecules of water, one molecule of carbon dioxide. And you can use bond enthalpies to estimate the delta H for this reaction. Delta H for this reaction is approximately equal to negative 682 kilojoules per mole. So that's what we get if we estimate this from bond enthalpies. So the negative sign means that much heat is released. So we're forming stronger bonds over here than we had in the original molecules. And since it takes energy to break bonds, we take some energy and break these bonds but we get a lot more back when we build these because overall these are stronger bonds. Okay, so energy is released. So we can actually do this as sort of a stoichiometry problem. So we can ask how much heat is produced for, say, a given amount of methane or a given amount of oxygen or, for that matter, a given amount of one of the products. So we could say how much heat is produced how much heat is released for, let's say, if we had 180 grams of water formed. So what we're asking is, if we formed 180 grams of water, how much heat must have been released in that reaction? So just like any other stoichiometry problem, we're going to start off with what we know, and we always have to go to the moles, and then we use a mole ratio in our balanced chemical equation, and then from that we'll get what we want. So if we write down our overall strategy here, it's going to be a mass of water, and once we have our mass of water, we're going to use that to form the moles of water. And then from that, from the moles of water, we're going to go through our heat of reaction over here, and we're going to get our heat. So it should be a three-step process. We'll do that on the next page. All right, so let's do our solution. We said that we were given 180 grams of water. So we've got to get rid of that and have moles of water. So we know there's 18 grams of water for every one mole of water. So we can cancel, we can cancel our grams of water. Great, so we've got moles of water. And we know we wanted to go from that to heat. So we've got to write a conversion factor here. And we know we want to end up with, uh, with kilojoules and that we've got negative 682 kilojoules per mole. But per mole of what? And this is the whole key to a stoichiometry heat problem right here. So this number means that this amount of heat is released for every one molecule of CO2 or one mole of CO2 because there's, a, there's an understood one here. Or we could say that there's this much heat released for every one mole of methane that we put in. Or we could say there's this much heat released for every two moles of water, or for every two or two moles of oxygen we put in, or for every two moles of, uh, of water that comes out. So we have to make sure we really pay attention to these stoichiometric coefficients. And so we want to cancel moles of water, we want to pay attention to this too. We're going to use the two here. Okay. So we said that that is that much heat is released for every two moles of water. 
And so now we can cancel our moles of water, and that leaves us with units of kilojoules. And that leaves us with an answer of a negative 3,410 kilojoules of heat being released. So that's much how much heat would be released if we start if we produced in the reaction 180 grams of water. So we can see this is just another stoichiometry problem.